What's up guys, Mr. Stockman back again for video number two for today. This time going over what the advanced band inquiry went over this last week, which was key signatures, sharps, and flats. Let's get started. Okay, so we're going over key signatures and sharps and flats and everything because that is super important. When you're reading your music, you're gonna hear a lot and the music teachers, we get really on you guys because you keep playing B natural instead of B flat or F instead of F sharp or E flat instead of E natural, all sorts of stuff. If you read your key signatures, that's gonna fix so many of these mistakes. That's why this is so important. So let's pay attention. Let's go over all the things I'm gonna cover in this lesson. And that is, what order do the sharps come in? There is a set rule on the order that these sharps always have to come in in a key signature. There's also a rule for what order do the flats come in? So we're also gonna cover what order do the flats come in? Then, when you see the flats, so when you see the sharps in the key signature, how do you find a key signature when there's sharps? And then how do you find a key signature when there's flats? And then a bonus at the end is I'm gonna show you how to find a key signature when there is neither a flat or sharp and there is just nothing in that key signature. So let's get started with what order do we have our sharps in? So first up, here's our sharps. F, C, G, D, A, E, and B. There's our order right here on what order the sharps come in. One fun little phrase that a lot of people do to memorize this is right here. Fat cats go down alleys eating birds. And then I have a nice good picture of a fat cat. So you can always remember fat cats going down alleys eating birds. If you like that, if you want to just Keep saying over and over to yourself, F, C, G, D, A, E, B, F, C, G, D, A, E, B. There is the order. And why is it important to memorize the order? Just like memorizing times tables. Do you have to know the times tables? No. But if you know them and you have them memorized, you can do math faster and easier. Do you have to know the order of your sharps? No. You just have to look at your key signature and read them. But if you're running into three, four, five sharps, and you're running through your music, it's a lot harder to stop and pause and read each individual sharp to figure out what you have to do with sharp. If you know your order, and you're quickly playing through music, and all of a sudden your eye catches a key signature with three sharps, and you know your order, you automatically know FCG, and you just keep playing on by. You will do so much better, and it'll be so much easier if you have it memorized, okay? So let's work on memorizing this order. Now I'm gonna give you examples. This is what a treble clef key signature looks like with all seven sharps. Notice, left to right, it's that order. F, C, G, D, A, E, and B. And you cannot put these in a different spot. You cannot take this F sharp on this top line Put it on the bottom space. It has a set location, so that way nobody gets confused. There is a rule on where the sharp goes, the order it goes in, so that way there is no tricking that can go on. You just have to see how many sharps are in that key signature. Makes it so much easier. Remember, like I've always told you guys, music is easy. If you find music really difficult reading it, you might be making it harder than it is. Okay, so always keep it simple. Keep it simple, we don't move these around. Flat, uh, sharps in the bass clef key signature. This is what they look like in the bass clef signature. Notice the same order, F, C, G, D, A, E, B. It's always gonna be in that order, okay? There's an example of that. Now, let's look at our flats. B, E, A, D, G, C, and then F. And a way to memorize this one, not a full acronym, is you have the word bead, and then you could either do girls cause fights, or greatest common factor, for those of you math people out there, or anything else you wanna come up with to memorize this. Now, some of you that are really smart and really good at patterns probably notice something. And I'm gonna point out to you right now for those of you who didn't quite get this. And that is, if we look at our flats, but instead we read this backwards, 
listen to this F C G D A E B there's our sharp order the flats and sharps orders are reverse of each other so if you memorize one the other one is just backwards okay so pick which one you most commonly see or which one's easiest and then use that to help you memorize the other one so if you are for example flute trombone baritone tuba bassoon oboe percussion those people memorize your flats first because you see a lot more flats in your music if you are the other instruments saxophones trumpets french horns clarinets memorize the sharps first because you see sharps in your key signature before you see flats so you're going to need to know your sharps a lot more than your flats if you're in choir it depends on what your teacher gives you some teachers start off with uh, music with flats others start with sharps so i would pick which one is easiest first and then really focus on the one when you start getting your first set of music what do you see first sharps or flats now let's look at reading a key signature okay so after we look at our flats here's again an example of what the flats look like in a treble clef and here's what they look like in a bass clef so you notice same just like with the sharps they go in that order okay so now when we read a clef you're not always going to have all of them in there so for example this has only four sharps i put a treble clef example i put a bass clef so that way whichever clef you're more comfortable with look at that one so look real quick what are the four sharps in that key signature and go in order left to right okay now looking at that i gave you guys a second to think we have f sharp then we have c sharp then we have g sharp and then we have a d sharp so there's what is in your key signature if your teacher says what is in the key signature that's your answer read them left to right okay there's a big difference there's what is in the key signature and what is the key the key asks you what scale is it based off of what is in the key asks you what do you see so what is in the key four sharps f c g and d sharp now for flats same thing what is in the key signature look at those three flats real quick treble or bass i'll give you a second to look at those okay now looking at those we have starting on the left b e and a and notice that's the beginning of the order of our flats bead b e a so even though there's only three it still stays in that order that's what makes members in that order so useful now we're going to look at once you could read the key signature how do you know what key you're in what scale are you playing what scale is this music based off of so if your teacher says what key are we in now you have to do it this way so let's look at the sharps first here on the left and if you need to take notes on this take your very last sharp go in your key signature look for the furthest to the right the sharp that's furthest to the right then what we are going to do is you take that very last sharp and you go up one letter in the alphabet so are not the order of the sharps but the alphabet a b c d e f g and it resets a b c d e f g and so on that's our alphabet that's what we use in music just a through g so let me give you an example if we had a f c g d a if we had all those sharps a is our last sharp what's one letter up from a that is b so you'd be in the key of b what is in the key signature f c g d a sharp what key are you in is b and notice i'm not saying the word concert pitch at all so those of you who are getting a little confused thing my teacher always says concert this concert pitch concert pitch we're not looking at concert pitch yet that'll be a whole nother video this is just what key are you in what is your key 
of your instrument. So we all have the same answer right now, okay? Now if we look at the flats, similar but a little different. You go to your last flat in the key signature and you go backwards one, but notice it does not say alphabet, it says in the order of the flats. So if we had two flats, B flat, E flat, you take the last flat, which is E flat, you go backwards one, that was B flat, that came right before our last flat. There's your key, the key of B flat. So that one's a lot more visual. And then I'm gonna show you some tricky ones at the end that I'm gonna help you so you don't get stumped. So now let's look at a couple of key signatures and let's walk through it together on how to find your key. So here we have a key signature with two sharps. First, think what is inside the key signature, F sharp, C sharp. Now for sharps, what do we do? You find your last sharp, C sharp. Then what do we do? You go up one letter in the alphabet. One letter in the alphabet. So if you need to, start over. A, B, C, D. This would be the key of D. The key of D has F sharp, C sharp in the key signature. And that tells you you're playing in the key of D. Your scale would start on D and go to D. If you see this key signature, it does not matter what instrument you play, your scale, you start on your note D and you go up to D and back down. Not worried about concert pitch. Let me remind you of that again. Now let's look at a flat key. If we have flats, look at what's in your key signature first. We have four flats, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat. You take your very last flat, just remember how to find the key, very last flat, and you go backwards one. Go backwards one in the order. So if we had four, backwards one, what is that third flat, the one right before? That is an A flat. So you are in the key of A flat. Your scale would start on your A flat, Go up to your A flat and back down. This is the key you are in. So always listen to that. Does your teacher ask you what is in the key signature or what key are you in? Just like, are they asking you what note are you playing? Like say for example, F sharp. Or are they asking you what note do you have? What type of note? Like a whole note, a half note, a quarter, an eighth. Those are two different questions. Okay, so think, what is in the key? What key are you in? Can be a little confusing, but listen to those key words. Now, let's look at this one. This has quite a few sharps in it, and this one's got a little trick to it. See if you could figure it out, what little tricky thing is about this key. Okay, so let's go in order. Let's name the notes first, all the sharps. F sharp, C sharp, G, D, A, and E sharp. Okay. All those are sharps. Now, what's your very last sharp? It's E. What is our trick? Go up one letter in the alphabet. So what letter comes after E? F. And if you stop there, you are almost correct. Good job for those of you who noticed the trick with this key. And it only happens in two keys this one was six and the one was seven sharps. And that is one letter up for me is F. However, this is not the key of F because if we go all the way back to the beginning, what do we see? We see an F sharp, which if that means everything in the song is every F is sharp, then the key can't be called F because you don't play F, you play F sharp. So you are in the key of F sharp. This only happens in those two keys, F sharp, and then if we add our seventh sharp, which would be B, note letter higher than B is C, but there's also a C sharp, so you call that the key of C sharp. Those are the only two sharp keys with sharp in the name. All the rest of them are regular, D, G, A, because those sharps are in those key signatures but the F and the C are for those two keys. So make sure you pay attention to that. 
Now here's a tricky one for the flats. What's in the key? Nice and simple. One flat. That's B flat. What did I say the trick was to find flats? You take the last flat and you go backwards one. Well, there's only one flat, so going backwards one, there's nothing before it. But if you remember what you're told all the time, and that is our musical alphabet always repeats, so does the order of the sharps and flats. It always repeats. So if we think our order, B, E, A, D, G, C, F, if it repeats, what comes after the F? B, B, E, A, D, G, C, F. So what comes before B? It's F. So this is where you have the key of regular F. This one is called F sharp because the sharp's in the key signature. This one is called F. And this is the only key with flats in it that does not have flat in the name. After that, everything's called B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat. This is the only one that does not have flat in the name, the key of F. Okay, now we're going to look at one more. I went over sharp key signatures, flat key signatures. However, there is one key signature that doesn't have either. It has nothing. It looks like this. It's just the clef and the time signature. There is nothing there. So if your teacher asks you what is in the key signature and you see this, your answer is nothing. There is nothing in the key signature. This means every note is natural. And like you see in all the other key signatures, they don't put the natural signs there. They only put natural signs when you're changing keys and they have to tell you this is no longer sharper, this is no longer flat. But at the beginning of the music, there never was a sharper flat. So they have this key signature that has nothing in it. This one you just have to memorize. This is the key of C. And the way I help my students memorize this, the way I think is easy, is that you think C, you think the word clear, the key signature is clear. It has nothing in it. So this one you do have to memorize. Everything is natural, the key of C. Okay. If you guys have any questions, if you're my students, please email me. If you're somebody else's student, ask your teacher, get some extra help, get some clarification, go back, watch a small piece of this video again. Hopefully this helps you guys. Don't forget again, hit that like and subscribe button just to help out. Let me know that you guys are watching and you're enjoying these videos. And if you're one of my students, I'll see you guys this next week.